What is going on everybody? It's Stas here and in this video I'm going to be showing you all my M1 Finance portfolio, breaking down the performance of the portfolio and showing you all my individual holdings, both stocks and ETFs, so you can get a better understanding on what I see value in right now in the stock market and how I invest my money in the stock market for the long term. And keep it in mind guys that this is a long term dividend growth portfolio. I'm not looking to sell these stocks in the next couple of months in the next couple of years i'm looking to hold these long term and get cash flow from them reinvest those dividends so ultimately i get even more cash flow right and as you read in the title as well i'm also briefly going to be giving you all my opinion on whether or not i think the end of robin hood is here robin hood i'm sure a lot of you guys know and honestly m1 finance as well they've been under a lot of pressure recently because a lot of the traditional Traditional brokers have now converted to commission free trading. The Fidelities of the World, TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, just to name a few. These are going to bring a lot more competition to Robinhood and honestly M1 Finance as well. And I want to give you guys my opinion on M1 Finance's competitive edge here and why Robinhood doesn't really have too much of a competitive edge except for one thing in my opinion right now. So with that further ado let's get into it if you guys enjoy this video hit that like button consider subscribing leave a comment let me know what your thoughts are and let's get into it guys so this is my portfolio right now and i haven't done an update i feel like it's been at least a month at this point let me hit it with a, with a refresh to show you guys what we're working with right now so the portfolio is worth $546.13 or that's the cash invested. I have some cash here on the sidelines waiting to be invested of around 72 bucks. And if we look at the performance very quickly, since July 2nd, which is when I created the portfolio, it's up 4.08% and it's up $9.32. And if we hit this little drop arrow, we can see earned dividends are $3.19. So out of the nine bucks, three bucks came from dividends roughly, and six bucks came from capital appreciation, also known as market gains, right? So if we just sift through, let's see the performance in the past week, about 3.8%. The past month, it should be up. Let's see what it says. If it loads, 3.36%. So overall, about 3-4% gain in terms of this portfolio and if we zoom down to show you all my holdings we can see here i hold eight different investments stocks and etfs the first one being johnson and johnson with a value right now of 123 dollars and it's worth 22.5 percent of my portfolio with a target of around 20 percent you guys can see the return is almost six percent right now in johnson and johnson it's up about three dollars and 22 cents since i've bought it around three bucks being market gains 33 cents being dividends the average share price here is 130 bucks and 50 cents roughly dividend yield right now is 2.91 percent and this is looking to be i'm looking to have this be a long-term investment dividend growth investment where i'm reinvesting the dividends hoping for a massive cash flow in the next really couple of decades when i'm looking to use this as income, you know, in my retiring years. That's kind of what I'm focusing on right now for this portfolio, right? And this is a dividend king, by the way, which means it's grown its dividend 50 plus years consecutively, which is absolutely amazing. And why I honestly have it as my number one holding in this portfolio, I just have a ton of faith in Johnson & Johnson, although they've been facing some heat at the end of the day. All these big companies, these massive Goliath companies, they, they face heat from time to time. So they're handling it well, in my opinion, and I'm sure they'll be fine here in the next couple of years. The second biggest position is Altria, ticker symbol MO, gain of around 0.91, actually a loss of around 0.91, loss of about 43 cents here market gains of minus $1.33, earned dividends of around $0.90. Cents. And why am I holding Altria, guys? This stock has been in the heat 
just like Johnson & Johnson. And typically, I like buying when stocks are under pressure, when they're seeing a lot of selling pressure, right? This is when value, in my opinion, is really coming. And that is a good opportunity to hop into a stock when you do see that type of value. So Johnson & Johnson is one of those stocks. And again, Altria here, we can see this dividend is 8%, guys. This is insane. It's been seeing a lot of pressure about Juul, everything that's been going on with e-cigarettes right now. That's been just shooting the stock down. And if you believe in the longevity of Juul, in the Kronos investment, and in all the other investments that they have in some other companies here that I'm sure a lot of you guys know, but I don't want to get too deep into in this video, this is a de this is definitely a great time to buy this stock at an 8% starting yield, 12 PE. I think the forward PE is even lower than that. This is a pretty good value, and I do feel comfortable, although it is risky risky of an investment. I do feel comfortable right now at this valuation to have it be around 15% of my portfolio, right? The third one is Abby here, my third largest holding, gain of around 2.91%, $1.29 market gain, or rather gain in general, 71 cents from market gains and 58 cents from earned dividends here. Average share price about 74 bucks. You guys can see right now it's trading at about 75 bucks and the dividend yield is at about 5.8%. This is another stock that took a beating when it merged with Allergen, right? It had a $60 billion merger with Allergen. The stock fell initially, right? That opened up the long-term value, in my opinion. I started buying into AbbVie recently, actually. If we go to the activity here, you guys can see I ended up buying AbbVie. I believe it was on the 26th here is when I started buying $40 worth, and I bought even more, I believe, last week, $30 bucks worth. So you can see some moves I've been making. You know, I put $100 on the 26th of September in terms of stock buying, $120 yesterday, and another $85 today. So I'm looking to build out this portfolio, guys, and show you all how I invest, right? And 3M is my fourth largest holding here, 12.6% of my portfolio, 10% is the target, so it's a bit overweight here. Nonetheless, the average share price, 166 bucks. I'm down on this position right now a little bit of around 1.56%. My total gain is negative 75 cents. I've made 42 cents from dividends, but the market market gains have been less than that, or rather, yeah, less than that at about $1.17 in the red. The dividend yield right now is 3.6%, and this is another one of those dividend kings, which again, this means they've raised their dividend for 50 plus consecutive years, which is incredible. So 3M, I like this company. It's actually getting hit a lot recently. So I do see value in this one on the dip. AT&T is another one that I hold. This is the fifth one. This is actually the one that I've been doing the best in terms of individual performance here of nearly 16%. In the gains here, 16% gains, up $5.25, 442 being from market gains, 83 cents being from earned dividends. We can see the dividend yield is 5.5% nearly, so this is another high dividend play. And honestly, guys, I just like this one for the long term. 5G streaming service they're coming out with. This is looking good in my personal opinion. And honestly, I just see a lot of potential in it long term. That's why I'm holding it, and I'm going to be reinvesting the dividends in a TNT. So this is another new one that I've added since the previous update, just like AbbVie. And I actually just bought this one today. It's ticker symbol SPHD, Invesco S&P 500, high dividend, low volatility ETF. So I'm up about 0.2% today on this. Uh, average cost $42 here. Dividend yield 4.2%. Expense ratio is 0.3%, although it's not one of the lowest expense ratios that I've seen. It's just justified because it is a high dividend um, yielding ETF right at the end of the day. And we can see here, if we zoom in a bit, um, actually, let's go and see the details. This holds 51 holdings right now. Inception date on the 17th of October in 2012. So 51 holdings, guys, that means this is dispersed. You know, the holdings are dispersed in this fund of each having about one to 3% total weight of the fund. And you can see a holding that 
they do hold is Ford. I also know they own um, Altria and a bunch of other ones as well. So I see potential in this one long term. And oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, this is a monthly dividend play, which is also why I wanted to get it in this portfolio to get some monthly dividend income action rolling through. And I'll just buy more and more of the shares to compound my wealth that way. So the last two holdings here, nothing crazy. Alibaba, this is not a dividend stock. It's actually a growth play up about 2.4%. And this is honestly a way to dip my toes into China. Although I do already have funds that do have some exposure to China. I just wanted to hold some Alibaba here because I do think it is the strongest company out of China. And if you guys see here, you know, it's about 7.4% of my portfolio. And I do plan on keeping it from that 5 to 10% range. And the last one I have here is VEA just to get some developed markets in my portfolio that exclude the United States. The beauty of this fund is it does not have any United States companies in it, right? It holds a lot of other developed market stocks in the fund. So this way I'm getting exposure to those markets, right? So assets under management a lot, 72 billion expense ratio 0.05, which is less than SPHD, but you can see the dividend yields 2%, which is also less than SPHD. PhD, right? But nonetheless, it pays a dividend, which is really, really good in my personal opinion. So I can then really just buy more shares and compound my wealth that way. So overall, guys, that is what the portfolio is looking like right now. And I do plan on adding a lot more money, a couple hundred dollars per month into this portfolio to build it out and show you guys how I personally build it. Because mind you, this is not my main portfolio. I'm strictly making this for you guys, right? I want to bring value to you so you can understand what I'm personally seeing value in, why I'm buying this stock, why I'm buying this ETF, because I think it can help you out in your investing. So let's talk about the competitive advantage that M1 Finance has and also whether or not I think this is the end for Robinhood. So M1 makes it very simple and really autonomous for you to invest in the stock market. This is the competitive advantage, right? You can just put money into this account on repeat without even going into this account, and it's going to be investing it for you based on how you've split it up in terms of your pie, right? When you open up M1, when you sign up, you create a pie based on individual stocks and ETFs, and obviously the percentages have to equal 100, obviously, right? And you put Put however many slices you want into the pie, then you click save, right? And if you want to have it be autonomous, for you to invest without even going into the platform, all you have to do is do auto invest on, right? Turn on auto invest and you don't even have to go into the platform, which is one huge competitive advantage that I personally love about M1 that I think a lot of beginners would also love about it. And off the top of my head now, you can also buy partial shares, which you cannot do on Robinhood. So I think that is huge for M1 Finance that really Robinhood doesn't have. At this point, all Robinhood has is options. Options, I personally use Robinhood for my options trading, and I think it's a pretty, pretty good uh, platform for that. But other than that, guys, I think Robinhood is facing a lot of heat right now because before these huge, you know, uh, you know, Charles Schwab, Fidelity, TD, before they got to zero commissions, a lot of people were going to Robinhood to trade stocks. And by trade stocks, I mean day trade, swing trade, and stuff like that. But one thing about Robinhood is that they had terrible charting software. So these traders were using Think or Swim, which is made by TD for their charting, right? They were using Fidelity's product, which is called Fidelity Active Trader Pro or something like that for the charting software. And that was kind of what people were doing. They were trading on Robinhood in terms of executing trades and looking at Think or Swim or some other charting software to break down stocks because when you're short-term trading, you obviously have to break down stocks on a charting software. So now that a Robinhood has a crap charting software and that TD and Fidelity have zero commissions, there's literally no reason for a trader like myself or a beginner trader out there to not go with TD because if you don't go with TD and you go with Robinhood, sure, you have zero commissions with Robinhood, but you have a crappy charting software. If you go with TD, 
you have zero commissions, but you have an amazing charting software that you can actually trade within the charting software. So this is something very negative, in my opinion, for Robinhood that I do think could potentially bring Robinhood to an end here in the next couple of years. I'm not going to say it's going to end, guys, because for all we know, Robinhood can end up thriving for the rest of this decade, the next couple of decades. Who knows, right? But all you have to realize is they are facing a lot of heat right now because their demographic, a lot of it, are traders, beginners out there that like trading in and out using charts. But now that TD has a great chart and zero commissions, that's going to be dragging people off of Robinhood. So let me know down below what you guys thought about that, what you guys thought about my portfolio. And if you guys do want to use M1 Finance, sign up for it. There is a referral link down below that if you sign up through that link, you get 10 bucks. I also get 10 bucks once you put in $100, once you deposit at $100 and start investing in the market. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Don't forget to leave that like, subscribe if you want to see further content, all the discord chats, all that stuff is linked down below in the description. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.